name's Alex Dunn. Today we're going to be featuring three wines from Germany from a producer called Weingut Tannisch. Uh, Weingut Tannisch is located in the Mosel region of Germany, uh, which is one of, um, one of 13 wine producing regions in Germany and arguably the most famous. So we've got two white wines, um, both from the Riesling grape, one dry and one slightly sweeter. And then we've also got a red wine from the Dornfelder grape. So let's not waste any time, let's get cracking with the first. So the first wine is the um, is the 2010 Tannisch uh, Liesere Niedenberg Helden Riesling Trocken Alter Reben. A uh, bit of a mouthful, um, but essentially what's that saying? It's 2010 vintage. Um, the Niederberg Helden is the uh, is the vineyard, and um, Trocken indicates that it's a dry wine. So off the bat, there shouldn't be any residual sugar in this wine. We shouldn't need to worry about that. It should be nice and bone dry. Uh, comes in at 13% alcohol. So let's get it in the glass and uh, see what we can pick up. Okay. okay, let's see what we can pick up on the beat. Okay, really interesting complex nose there. Yeah, so one of the real char characteristics of the Moselle region is that the Moselle is the river which runs through this region and flanking the river either side are these immensely steep slopes which are where the, where the vines grow. They can often be up to 70-80% gradient and so what happens is the sun um, beats down on the river which then reflects onto these, these, these steep slopes um, which absorbs the sun and, and helps produce a really, a really um, developed and concentrated fruit. Another thing is the soil in this region is predominantly made, of, made up of slate. Lots of different colours, brown slate, blue slate, grey slate, but the slate also helps absorb the heat um, and also gives the wine an almost mineral character. And that's really what I can pick up here on the beak. It's, uh, it's almost like a sort of uh, like a wet, stony mineral character coming through. A really, really interesting. Also picking up some lime and citrus. But let's see what comes through on the palate. Mm. That's really interesting. So I picked up some citrus on the, on the, on the beak. None coming, th well, not none, but very, very little coming through. But what is coming through is a much richer fruit, uh, almost uh, heading towards the tropical spectrum. Um, some pineapple there, some peach for sure. Still getting that minerality uh, and earthiness, and um, and the length is very impressive. A you know, sign of a good wine is: are these flavours going to linger with you? Stare at the back of your throat, um, you know, thirty seconds, uh, one minute uh, after you've taken a sip. Um, and I'm really getting that with this wine. I say it's bone dry, no residual sugar, but it's really fruit driven. Um, good acidity, um, which makes it quite refreshing. So I think this would be a great food wine, um, but at 13%, you can certainly just crack it open and, uh, and uh, feel free to quaff it in your armchair. So, well, that's a really good start. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on. So now we've got the uh, also 2010 vintage. Braunberger Jufa Riesling Ausleser. So the Braunberger Jufa is uh, a vineyard, and I can tell you, in fact, it's one of the, uh, the most famous vineyards in the Moselle region. Um, it's, uh, it's really well renowned, and, uh, and Ausleser uh, is, is a sign of uh, the quality of the wine. So it suggests that it's the, the, the berries, the, the grapes have been picked much later in the harvest, which means that. They, they're more concentrated, they've got higher sugar levels, which often suggests, not always, but nine times out of ten, that it's going to be a sweet wine. Let's not second guess it. Let's get it in the glass and oh, find out. Okay. See what we can pick up on the beer? Okay, interesting. Before I was getting that minerality, I'm definitely getting that again, but I'm also getting... Um, I'm also getting a much uh, more honeyed, um, almost like some sort of honeycomb uh, on the nose. It's almost as if I can sort of pick up the sweetness on the nose. Really developed, really developed fruit, and um, and so honey, a little bit of tropical fruit. I think almost I, I don't know, like a, something really tropical, like a, like a guava or something. It's uh, it's quite hard to pick out, but certainly moving much more away from the uh, from the fresh citrus into the more tropical. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Mm. Definitely getting that honey. It's it's really interesting. This wine is a lot sweeter than you would normally drink for sure. 
I mean, it only comes in on 7.5% alcohol, which means what they've done is during the fermentation process, they've stopped it. So before the wine, uh, before all the alcohol can ferment to get to that 13% or whatever normal table wines are, they stop it, which means there's a lot of the sugar that was still in the grapes, concentrated in the grape juice, remains in the wine. And, and it, it's a really great style because what they've done is, it is sweet, but it's not sickly. 2010 was a cool year, which means the grapes had good acidity. And, and when you drink this wine, you get lovely sweetness. You get some guava, almost like a little bit of mango and honey. And it's sweet and luscious. But then you swallow, and the acidity, it cleans your mouth out. It's, 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 so in no way is it left too rich or cloying. It's almost refreshing. Um, I think these wines are really great, great aperitif. You know, your guests come round, you normally hand them a glass of sparkling, some carver, some champagne. Because this is so low alcohol, 7.5%, hand them a little glass of this. Really unusual, a lot sweeter than, they, than, than probably they'll have tried before. But after a couple of sips, the sugar goes away and you're just left with this harmony of fruit. This is, a, this is another classy wine, both of these. Uh, very different styles, but, but both very impressive. And I, I, I'm still, those, those wonderful fruit flavours. Still lingering in the back of my throat. Okay, so moving on to the red now. Um, again, 2010 from Vine Boutanisch, uh, Trocken Dornfelder. Trocken, as I said before, for the first wine, indicates it's a dry wine, as I guess we expect with the red. Um, Dornfelder, uh, it's a great that actually we're seeing a lot uh, more over here in the UK. So, um, you know, English wine is uh, coming along slowly but surely. And um, Dornfeld is um, one of the grapes that's being uh, grown quite a lot uh, for the red wines. And uh, one of the reasons for that is um, it's a very, uh, the grape itself produces quite dark wine. So in a country like ours where uh, it's not massively hot, um, you're not going to get a really rich developed fruit easily. Um, it, it's beneficial to have a, a, a grape like Dornfeld which will still give you a nice dark wine. And, and I mean I even see that, I'm definitely getting that here. Um, it's a really dark rich uh, colour. Um, but, um, but let's see what we can pick up uh, aroma-wise. Okay, so um, I wouldn't say it was uh, as complex on, on, on the beak as uh, for these first two, but getting some lovely red fruit, um, some cherries, a little bit of yeah, a little bit of strawberry coming through. So red fruit driven predominantly um, reminds me um, yeah of a, of, a, of a sort of Burgundian style. Um, on the beak. Let's see what we pick up on the palate. Hmm. I must say that's really surprising. You know, I wasn't expecting much, and, and I wouldn't call this complex wine. Um, you know, it does what it says on the tin, um, but, um, you know, uh, 2010 Dawn Filter. Um, but it's a, 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 it's a lovely light fruity style, despite the dark colour yeah, it's, it's, it hasn't got a sort of big tannic structure. It's light, it's refreshing, Get, definitely getting that, 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 that red cherry coming through on the palate. Reminds me a little bit of Beaujolais. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you drink Fleury, um, but, you know, these types of Beaujolais, Moulin Vent, and, um, and you like a sort of light style of wine, uh, really good with, uh, with grilled white meat, for example. I think this would be absolutely lovely with like chicken or turkey or something like that. Um, and it's light and refreshing, um, and as I said, it's never going to be um, you know, the world's most complex red, but what it does do, it, it delivers a, a, a very drinkable, um, affordable, um, uh, refreshing wine, which, um, which uh, as I said, I think would be really nice with, uh, really nice either just to uh, quaff out in the garden on a hot summer's day, or to, um, or to have with some, uh, with some white meat. So, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, definitely comes as a nice surprise. So, three wines here, all very different. Um, both the white Rieslings, um, one dry, one sweet, are very complex wines. Um, you're going to pay a little bit more to get hold of them. Um, these bottles come in around the £20 range, but they're very, very impressive wines, and I think they really reflect um, the style of Riesling that's being made in the Mosul, which is arguably one of the best in the world. Um, the red, slightly um, cheaper, um, not as complex a wine, but a really enjoyable, fruit-forward style. 
and, um, and if you're a red wine drinker, or even I think if you're a white wine drinker and you don't like reds, this would be a really good way of getting into the reds because it's not too heavy, it's not too uh, in your face, it's quite light. Um, so I think it'd be a really good way of getting into, uh, getting into red wine if you, if you normally drink white. So um, yeah, very impressed by Vine Good Tannish. Um, get the thumbs up and um, keep, keep, uh, uh, keep doing, the, um, doing the good stuff because um, we're enjoying it over here in the UK. Thanks.